Ciao ragazzi e bentornati a questa seconda lezione di grammatica per Italian Accelerator episodio numero 5. So yes, welcome back to the second uh, explainer lesson for Italian Accelerator episode 5. If you haven't watched it, pause this video, you have to watch the chat first without subtitles, understand it with subtitles, analyze it, look up words, then come back to this lesson where I explain in a very detailed fashion everything that we discussed, that Lisa and I discussed. So in case you have, um, this is the second lesson, so look up the first one if you missed it. We go on with more expressions. Just a little reminder of my website, that it's italymedisi.com. It kind of makes all of this possible. Perché sì. sei sposata? Sì, sono sposata con Marco, il mio compagno da sette anni. Uh -huh. eh, abbiamo girato il mondo insieme eh, sulle navi da crociera eh, come duo musicale. Eh. Lisa is saying that she is married to her partner of seven years. Now, so in English we say my partner of seven years or uh, in, in another context I'll tell you in a second, we would use different preposition. In Italian we're using da. That means from. So he's my partner from seven years. This is a little bit weird for English speakers because like I said, we might say my partner of seven years or he's been my partner for seven years. Okay, in Italian, when something started in the past and it's still ongoing, we use da. For example, something that I often hear. Studio italiano da tre anni. In English you'd say, I've been studying Italian for three years. Use for. In Italian we use da, which is from. Why? Because we started three years ago and we're still doing it, so we've do we're doing it from that point in time until now. It's a different way of looking at language and reality. Neither is right, neither is wrong. But I just wanted to point out that often you're getting the preposition wrong because you're not getting the Italian, you're not thinking with an Italian brain, obviously. So, for example, da quanto tempo studi italiano? From how much have you been studying Italian? Instead of how long for have you been studying or for how long? So in English we use for, in Italian we're going to use da because it started and it's still ongoing. If it wasn't ongoing, meaning it started and it finished in the past, we would then use per in italiano. So for example, Ho studiato italiano per cinque anni. That means that I studied Italian for five years in the past. As in, one of the things I've done in my life was to have studied Italian for five years. I'm no longer doing it. So if you're using per in Italian, often you're saying that you're no longer doing it when it's about time, okay? If you're talking about time stuff, you should be using da in, me, in most cases. Okay, abbiamo girato il mondo. We have traveled the world her and her husband, as a, as a music duo uh, on cruise ships, you'll learn later. Abbiamo girato il mondo. Now, English speakers tend to use the verb viaggiare a lot, and it's incorrect. I actually have a video called Top 10 Italian Mistakes on the verb viaggiare. I can't remember what episode I should have checked before, but um, look it up. Um, we don't use viaggiare the way you're thinking. So, to say that we've traveled the world, we are going to use, abbiamo girato il mondo. We went around the world, okay? Why doesn't viaggiare, I mean, in this case, viaggiare could work. Abbiamo viaggiato per il mondo. You would need to say per, so don't use viaggiare because you're probably not using it, right? Watch that episode to understand how to use viaggiare really, okay? Poi a un certo punto, dopo 6-7 anni, ci siamo stancati e abbiamo deciso di cambiare vita, voltare pagina. Ok, this one is a, is a very cool, useful, easy expression for you to start incorporating because we use it a lot in Italian and it's a un certo punto. And at some point, so you're telling a story and then at some point something happens, that's the expression, a un certo punto, at a certain point. It, it could often translate, be translated, uh, rendered the idea of suddenly. Like I was talking to Michael and then suddenly uh, he started singing, okay? 
stavo parlando con uh, stavo parlando con Michael e poi a un certo punto ha cominciato a cantare you know? cioè, a un certo punto can off render the idea of suddenly and it means at some point or then at some point something happened I love this expression so what did I do at some point? abbiamo deciso di cambiare vita abbiamo deciso di cambiare vita we decided to change life so uh, Something, a few things, oh, there's so much in this. Abbiamo, deci abbiamo deciso is the passato prossimo of decidere, we decided you, okay? Deciso is an irregular past participle of decidere, but that's fine. D, why D? You ask me a lot, why that preposition? I don't understand preposition, I don't know when to use which. I have videos coming up on prepositions, but there are some things that nobody will ever be able to tell you, but a dictionary. And that's because often a verb in Italian uses a certain preposition just because. So the Italian verb decidere, to decide, uses the preposition di whenever you decide to do something. So in English you decide to do, do something, just like you listen to music, but in Italian you don't use the to, you know, ascoltare musica. Um, later on you'll talk about, we'll see the verb The Italian way of saying to depend, as in it depends on something. Well, in English, it depends on. In Italian, it's not on, okay? So those prepositions, you cannot guess. Each verb has its own. So if you're in doubt or if you think, oh, I think I need a preposition in what I'm trying to say, you're going to have to look up the verb that you are trying to use, like in this case, decidere, and go through the examples and see what is the preposition that the examples use when decidere is followed by a verb. So, abbiamo deciso di cambiare vita and then change life. Something that, uh, again, it happens a little bit, it's a bit different from it between Italian and English. In Italian, even when we have... In Italian, we tend to use the singular of something... Oh, I don't know how to explain this. You know, here we decided to change life, meaning we decided to change our lives, okay? In English, there's two people, so there's two lives, okay? There's two people, so two people hit their heads, right? If they bang each other's head, okay? So in Italian, we tend to use the singular even though there's multiple elements. So abbiamo sbattuto la testa means we hit our heads. But we're actually saying we hit our head because I hit mine and he hit his. So many H's that I'm not very good at pronunciation-wise. Okay, so, um, so you, you're getting where? Now, we decided to change life. I guess you could say that in English, but often in English you, you, you would use the plural because there's many lives that are being changed. In Italian, we only use the singular, okay? So I could say, la nostra vita è importante. Our life is important, meaning our lives are important. So that's something that might be different between English and Italian. And now, uh, Lisa says that we decided to change our life. Voltare pagina. Literally, turn the page. That's the expression that means to turn the page, both in the literal sense, if you're reading a book, then voltare pagina, volto pagina, but it's often used uh, with this verb voltare, is often used in its metaphorical sense, like here, meaning turn the page on life, okay? Quindi volto pagina, I'm turning the page of my life. Changing complete outlook on life, that means voltare pagina. If you're flipping pages, The verb that we use more commonly is girare pagina. Gira la pagina, turn the page, if it's physical. But you could use voltare as well, even if it's just a physical turning of the page. Anyway, if it's metaphorical, you have to use voltare. Visto che io ho la grande fortuna, bla bla bla. Visto che io. That visto che is something that we use a lot in Italian. It could tr be translated into English with seeing that I have the great fortune or seeing as I have the great fortune. It's like saying because, because I have the great fortune. But in Italian, we hardly ever use perché when you're using the English because, meaning this is the reason for that. Okay, if, if you're trying to say, um, you know, like, because you told me a lie, I'm gonna do this. Eh, it's not really, it doesn't work in Italian. It'd be like, it'd be more appropriate to say, since you told me a lie, I'm gonna do this. And that idea 
is rendered with the visto che. Another one would be dato che, given that. So bear this in mind if you're trying to say that. This one is just a little expression that if you were wondering, oh, yes, she said she's got double citizenship, and that's how we say it in Italian. La doppia cittadinanza. Cittadinanza means citizenship, and doppia means double. So same as English, really. But in case you didn't know the word, there it is. Sono nata a Melbourne. Sono nata a Melbourne. The, you probably you know this one, but sono nata is from the verb nascere. Nascere means to be born. And like in English, it's a little bit funny. Like you say, I was born, no, I have born or something like that. Um, in Italian, it's an intransitive verb, like in English, which means that the auxiliary is always essere. And therefore, because Lisa is a woman, she has to match the past participle to a feminine. Sono nata. A Melbourne, she was born in Melbourne. Notice the preposition. In Italian, we always use a before a city. Perfetto, we're done for today. That was another big, intense lesson. Uh, I try to keep them under 10 minutes, but I usually can't. But yeah, if you get tired with a lesson, pause and come back to it. These are really, really intense lessons. They shouldn't be on YouTube. They should actually be in a private membership site because it's hard to get, sometimes it's hard to get somebody's commitment on YouTube when you got a lot of content and it's really good quality, I hope. Uh, because, yeah, YouTube is mostly for distractions, but I know you guys are here to learn, so I'll keep making these and uh, offer them to you. Subscribe if you haven't, <laughs> and I'll see you next week for explainer lesson number three. Ciao, ciao. Ragazzi, per non perdere nessuna lezione di italiano, attivate le notifiche, si fa così. Prima vi iscrivete al canale, poi fate clic sulla campana vicino al bottone rosso e selezionate questa opzione. Salvate e via! Facile, no?